a clean workbench. Which is the best way to start any project. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are going to be making two optical illusion cutting boards, which is going to be completely awesome if it works. I don't know how to do it. I'm going to try to do it from pictures without watching any videos on it. We're going to see if we can do it. For this project, I actually bought wood, which is pretty rare for me. I got mahogany walnut, which is way more expensive than mahogany. And I got maple, hard maple, which is going to be our light color. Judging by the numbers, I would say it's eight feet zero inches, but I can't quite tell. Trifle bit bowed. Forgot to print out a sheet of what this looks like, but that is the look I'm going for. It's this sort of, it looks like it's a bunch of cubes stacked on top of each other or a diagonal pattern, but it's not. It's really, really cool. The maple ones are cut into four different pieces, so I think the lines run this way and how it's glued together. We just have to make strips that look like these squiggly things. That's our first cutting board, but our second one is going to be a little bit different. Um, it's the, um, I'll show you later. That one is an end grain cutting board, the one I just showed you, which is a little bit, I don't like end grain cutting board because I don't have a, a uh, I don't have a drum sander. And if you have a, just a planer, you really don't want to throw an end grain cutting board through a planer because it'll explode and that will be bad. My solution is to make it not an end grain cutting board and I think I've seen that happen before, but I had to figure out a different pattern from what they did, I think, to do that. But look at this, right? I could cut this out and plane all that and cut it down and make everything. And I could use that and still get a decent little cutting board out of that, even after doing all my reconfiguring and cutting and angling and all that stuff. I should be able to get a good cutting board if I cut it, you know, three feet long, square. Perfect. Now we're gonna plane it to the consistent thickness. It's kind of like making Damascus steel, you know? You wanna have as much material as possible the entire time, because that's obviously a very relatable thing to do. Science lesson. Sapil originates from West Africa and it can be found most easily in countries such as Tanzania, Nigeria, and Ghana, where the individual trees can grow up to an impressive height of 45 meters. Give it to me in English, seriously. So I guess they're big trees, so when they mill one, they get a lot of lumber out of it. That's some pretty wood right there. I mean, that stuff planes like fodder. I think it's actually easier to plane hardwoods than softwood, because the softwood just kind of squish and they get clogged up and they make giant shaving. These are just made like Table saw shavings, almost. Five and a half. So we have five and a half inches. If we do an inch and a quarter, then you get two and a half, five, which might be good because our blade widths are going to make us run out. Let's do an inch and a quarter. I just going on my merry way. Looks pretty, doesn't it? Oh, it's pretty. When I realized I need twice as many maple as I do of anything else. I'm running out of maple at an alarming rate. I need four more. Well, and we're gonna clamp it up like this. Then we're gonna cut all these angles, and then we're gonna cut those into pieces, and we're gonna flip them all around. It's gonna look amazing. First glue up's done, the least complicated one. We're just gonna clip this one and we're gonna get start cutting it down and hopefully I'll get the right angle. Really be bad if I didn't get the right angle. What do you say we cut our losses and call it done? Done. Bye. End of video. We're not actually going to do that though, I kind of want to. We're gonna hit it with the belt sander to get all the glue off the bottom and the top and then it's gonna be flat and then we're gonna cut it with the circuit saw and then we're gonna cut it with the table saw. This is my favorite part of the whole project right here. Whee. Pretty sure this is the biggest thing I ever glued up and the biggest thing I ever approached the belt sander with. And it's a little bit scary. It's a little bit cut. Try to figure out this angle. Now we did some careful calculations and we figured out that this is the angle that we need to make a perfect rhombus shape. 42 degrees. I changed the angle to a 33 degree angle. 33 degrees makes it, so the way I laid it out, I should've made these wider, apparently, because what's happening, I'm on the corner, right there, of that walnut piece, then we're gonna cut it in half, and we need enough space to fit a blade in there so we aren't cutting into the corner of our mahogany piece. Give me about eighth inch, three thirty seconds right there, which is a blade width, so I can cut on this corner, and then we'll not cut into that corner. There's a little bit of maple there, I'm fine. If it cuts off a tiny bit of the corner, also doesn't really matter. It's still gonna work out fine. <coughs> Straight edge, looks pretty good. These ones broke because there's basically no anything attaching them. Let's go to one and three eighths and see if my table saw lines up with my line. 
Those are so cool. And now I'm gonna make it even better. Originally I said the minus saw was gonna be the best thing to cut these square, but then I thought, well, the table saw would probably be safer, but now I'm thinking maybe the minus saw will be better. So we're gonna test it with a short one, and we're gonna square off the end. Just doing that little tiny test, there's way too much tear out on the maple. That's not gonna work. We're gonna use a miter gauge. They're gonna be loose, and they can just fall out the back. See if we can destroy two days of work really quickly. Super confusing to look at. What exactly is going, and it's not even glued up yet. You can still see all the joints in the maple and stuff, and that's like, that's confusing. I honestly don't know how I'm gonna glue this up, and I'm really worried about it, because that's could really destroy this project, and uh, I'm getting a little bit nervous. Gluing up in two directions at once is never fun. Let's do another row. I think we're still not anywhere near 13 inches. Cool, because I can still put it in my planer. Oh man, if I do one more row, it won't fit in the planer. That is a really nice size for a cutting board, so I don't really want to go bigger than that. I haven't said this yet, but I'm actually doing this cutting board as part of a challenge that I'm doing with one of my very good friends, Nate Clem. I will put his face right here. Nate Clem, great guy. He's making a cutting board, I'm making cutting boards. Um, I was gonna originally make two different designs, but now I have enough blocks to where I think I can just make them. Um, two of the same design, and we're gonna do a challenge, he's gonna come here and we're gonna look at both of our cutting boards, and you guys are going to choose which one rocks and which one stinks and needs to be burned. So, um, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Definitely go check out his channel. Uh, I played around with some ideas. Um, I don't really like any of them. Well, I could make a really small cutting board out of chevron. I'm gonna cut these up into these blocks and make another optical illusion. Maybe I'll try gluing this one up first, because it's smaller, and I'll do a test piece out of it. So there's the second one. And it's like as big as the first one, and I'm pretty sure the wood multiplied to do that. Ah oh, man, which one do you like better? Because these are different, see? The white lines go, this is like the one on Amazon I saw. And this one's just what I did from, just from memory, and I got it wrong. I think that one's better. But, I mean, they're both super cool, so there's not really a, a good and a bad. I'm going to glue them both up like that, and I'm going to keep them. Fat bead. Okay, it's been drying for a while. Look at that, it even comes off. You don't need to clamp them for forever, you know, the whole time it's drying. So I'm gonna unclamp it, let it sit till the morning, and we'll clamp the other one, let it sit till the morning, and then we can plan them both and get them all finished up, and they'll be beautiful. And now, we wait till tomorrow. That one looks decent. Look at holes in it. I know a bunch more holes are gonna show up too. Probably plan it too, but I don't have much time. I have to be somewhere very soon, so. This one looks way tighter. I'm gonna do this one, because if I wanna get one done right now, I wanna do this one, because I think it looks better. Let's do it. This is my leveling board. Twisted and cupped and whatnot. It was hot. I'm gonna put there, there, there. Even out the gap. I forgot to sand the surface, but we can do it on the board, I guess. Caulk these edges. It sticks enough, but not too well, so you don't like doesn't come off. Take super, 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 super light passes. Go just like not even touching. Wow, that's a cool pattern. And let's see how flat it is. This is a milled steel flat. It's not perfectly flat. It's got like a 30 second off in that direction. Wow, it's really off in that way. Yeah, it's like a 16th off in bow. Maybe this board's bowed. Nope, the board's not bowed. Let's hot glue all these edges and then plane them again and see if it fixes it. Slather up these edges. 
<laughs> Alright, I went through one time without adjusting the height from what it was, and it's like dead flat now. It's a wood product, it's going to change, it's going to move. But whatever, it's good now. It's probably the flattest board I've ever seen this big, actually. We're going to fill in all the cracks and stuff with some wood glue and wood dust and all that jazz, and that's just an awesome looking cutting board. And that is a lot of glue. Because that glue is stuck way too well for comfort, I'm the whole bench off, and I'm going to actually oil it. It's almost like an air hockey table. That's just kind of almost no pressure. That's a gap. That's a gap. Another gap. There. Gap there. Hole there. That's a gap. Gap there. It does help to put some wood dust in it. Just fill them with something that isn't black, you know? The part that makes it all shine. Kind of gives it some structure in those bigger caps. Oh, yeah. One in the middle, too. I'm gonna fill all the cracks in this one, but I'm not gonna let you see it because it was really boring the last time, I'm sure. Okay, I just came back this morning to these cutting boards and there's still some gaps just peeking through, but it looks way, way better. It's kinda of loud, I got the heater going in the background. But... Okay, pick your favorite now. The one with the, uh, we'll call this one perpendicular because it's perpendicular to the long edge and this one's parallel. Look for the white ones because they're easy to see. Right now that one looks cool, but anyway, but this one, same pattern, different way. Or if you look at it like from this side, see, it looks like they're stacked on top of each other going that way. They could look like the, uh, well that's just confusing. You probably can't hear anything with my face towards the heater, but this crosscut sled is my absolute favorite way to cut wide things, wide crosscuts on short pieces. For long boards, you can't do it. That's why I like the radio alarm stuff. We're just gonna touch off. We're just gonna hit it, scrape it off. I don't really feel like doing a quarter inch roundover. That's just too basic. I think a chamfer is actually going to look much nicer. The thing I love about chamfers is you can make basically any size, well you can make any size chamfer out of a chamfer up to the biggest size it can do, which is really cool. I could put my dust collection fence on, but the floor is kind of dirty already. I have them sitting up on angles, so maybe, and it was really humid, so things are moving around. And they will continue to change for the rest of the time they look like cutting boards. Start there, and then we'll work up. This one's actually dead flat still. Like, absolutely no movement, sits perfectly. This one is not. And with rubber feet on there, it'll help, but I don't know if I can give this thing away. But this one's dead flat still. And this is the one that I did wrong, basically. I'm gonna oil them and see how they actually look. Boy, ooh, look at that color. This will make all the grain pop, and then we'll send it back down. And we'll stay that way forever, right? Probably definitely going to do rubber feet on the bottom. And they feel like butter and it works really well and I like how it looks. Let's do some more. You get really soaked in, you know? Gotta get let that color out. Yeah, that looks better than the water. Did by a good bit. This whole video was a challenge and I did this challenge with Nathaniel Clam. He has a great channel. Go check his channel out too. I'll put the picture right here of his face. See the face. We're gonna do some montages of both these cutting boards so you can see them up close and you guys are gonna decide which one's better. Vote and tell us which one's better. He thinks his is better. I think mine's better. You guys are gonna tell us the truth.
Okay, the results are in, and 32% of people voted for Nate's cutting board, and... No. 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 32% of people voted for your cutting board. 60... Slight difference. 60 something of them voted for my cutting Let's board. Let's just go for what I sent. Okay, so... I won. Congratulations. You won. Disappointing. Hope you liked the video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing to both of our channels. See you in the next one. Fanny Clam, Benjamin's Cut Twice. You know the names. Goodbye.